Hey, it's Dr. Cody Rawl with Tech for Psych. In this video, I wanted to show you an experiment that you can do at home with your own personal EEG device like the Muse headset. So what people noticed early on in EEG history is that uh, alpha waves, the brainwave frequency that goes from eight to 13 hertz, went up dramatically when you close your eyes. Okay, now this takes us all the way back to the 1920s when Hans Berger was developing EEG technology and in 1929 published his paper on alpha waves. Now as I said, between 8 and 13 hertz, alpha waves are very highly associated with a meditative state, a wakeful mindfulness. So you're not quite asleep, but you're also very relaxed and uh, we use this brainwave quite a bit in ratios to help people get biofeedback for meditation. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to record my brain waves by using the Muse headset uh, with my eyes open and with my eyes closed. And that information is going to be sent through Bluetooth to my computer, which will record the brainwave uh, numbers. And I will process that data with uh, Muse Lab into MATLAB and then graph it in MATLAB and also ex export it to an Excel spreadsheet where, we'll, where we will graph it there as well. And what we will be looking for is this uptick in alpha activity in the occipital lobe. Now the occipital lobe is where the activity actually goes up and that's where the visual processing happens in the brain. And no one really knows why the alpha activity goes up when you close your eyes like that, but it's very interesting nonetheless. And uh, I think that what we're gonna see is that when you look at the Muse headset, we'll see the most activity increase on these sensors back here, the temporal parietal, temporal parietal area of the brain. Um, with a less uptick in uh, the frontal area, only when my eyes are closed, right? Uh, there's no uh, occipital sensor with the Muse headset, but since the temporal parietal region right here between the, behind the ear is the closest to that region, we should see the alpha uptick in that area. So stay tuned for the tutorial. I hope you enjoy it. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is open the Muse IO, Muse in and out, and I'm going to be pressing the button down on my Muse headset to get it to start up, connect through Bluetooth. If you need more information on that, you can take a look at my previous tutorial video. You'll see all these numbers that come up. That's how you know the headset's connected. Next step is I'm going to open up Muse Lab, and then in ports, I'm going to enter 5000, press enter, Then you got the headset connecting and you see all the data streaming in. Next thing I'm gonna do is put the headset actually on my head and you can see the little horseshoe in the upper right corner showing that the connection is good. You might have to fiddle around with it a little bit, but you, if you get all the colors, then you know it's fully connected. Then I'm gonna to go to visualizers, I'm gonna to go to scrolling line graph and uh, might as well just pick the alpha relative values for the four different channels. Just tick the little boxes there so that they come up on the graph. And this can be a little tricky, but if you click on the graph and hit the up arrow on your keyboard, it should um, increase the amplitude of the waves or it increase it in scale so that you can see it more so it's not just straight lines. It's always interesting to look at. Then I'm going to go to recording and I'm going to change the file name of my output file before I do anything. I'm going to call it alpha experiment and then the first one I'm going to do eyes open. What I'm going to do is I've got the headset on my head so I'm just going to hit record. I'm just going to sit there very still trying not to move too much with my eyes open trying not to blink too much. Any movement or Blinking is going to in introduce artifacts, so I'm keeping as still as possible. I'm going to keep still for about 20 seconds or so just to get a good reading. And basically what's happening right now is the computer is taking all the data from the Muse headset via Bluetooth and storing it in a file. After a little bit, I'm going to hit stop. So that's 
that file is now saved in my computer in the recordings file of, of Muse. And uh, this next one I'm going to do is the same name, but I'm going to call it Eyes Closed. And I'm going to hit record, and I've actually got my eyes closed right now. And it's actually interesting looking at this. You could almost just see the alpha waves increase right after I did that, just on this graph. So I'm sitting there with my eyes closed for about 20 seconds. And then at the end, I do actually have to open my eyes to hit stop. But for the majority of the recording, my eyes were closed. So now that I have my recordings, I'm going to track down the files. So I've got my recording file open with the Muse Lab files in it. And what I'm going to do is convert to MATLAB files by using Muse Player. So open up the Muse Player terminal. I'm going to create a new window. I'm going to use this trick where I have uh, the Muse Lab files. I'm going to drag and drop it into the terminal for Muse Player and copy that address so that uh, when I enter the command, it knows exactly where the file is coming from. I'm going to hit Enter. And then I'm going to uh, summon Muse Player. go dash F for file, hit uh, control paste so it has the address and I'm going to go dash M which is the command for con converting it to a MATLAB file. Then I'm going to enter the file name that I want it to be called. Now this is the uh, MATLAB experiment alpha relative eyes closed file. And then hit enter and you can see it crunching the numbers, exporting it. And then I'm going to do the same exact thing with the uh, eyes closed file. So again, I'm dragging and dropping, getting the address in there in the, uh, in the terminal. Summoning Muse Player. So uh, exporting that file. And these files get exported under home on my computer. So I just go to home and the files in there and I'm going to drag and drop both of them down to the desktop. And then I have my uh, MATLAB files for my experiments right there on the desktop. So then the next step is going to be opening up MATLAB. Now I have all my research uh, numbers for MATLAB in a folder called EEG Research and as you can see I've already got my MATLAB routed to that folder so that when I open up MATLAB I can go to EEG Research uh, right click go down to add to path select folders and subfolders and now MATLAB has loaded up all the information in that folder so I can uh, pick and choose from those files and when I open, open them, MATLAB uh, recognizes that uh, it's within a certain path and it doesn't confuse different variables that I might be putting in later. So I'm going to open up elements. I'm going to go to alpha relative. Open that up. And what you have is uh, the first column there has reference values and then all the uh, relative values for alpha are in the next four rows. So I'm going to do this with alpha eyes open first. Again, go to alpha relative. And the first step, you know, these reference, reference values I think are important if you're doing really um, precise calculations. But for today, I'm just going to delete that column column because I don't want to graph the reference values that are very small. I really just want the numbers for the alpha uh, relative. So I'm going to control all on that. I'm going to uh, create a new little object from that selection and it's calling it alpha underscore relative one. And what I'm going to do is plot alpha relative one. So you got a little plot there. And what I'm going to do is actually screen capture that for later. But I want you to notice that uh, within this eyes open plot, all the different variables go about the same. In, in every channel, each line represents a channel. They're all kind of a similar amplitude. 
So now I'm going to graph the eyes closed file. And uh, sometimes you need to clear the workspace just to make sure that no objects are left over in there. You don't want to be confusing different parameters that have already been defined by previous files you've opened up. So just clearing it clears all the objects in MATLAB. Um, again, I'm going to bring up the alpha relative, and this is for uh, eyes closed. I'm going to delete that column. Control A for uh, selecting everything. Uh, again, create a new chart from the selection. And then what I'm going to do is plot alpha relative. And so this is for eyes closed. And notice that two of the lines are much higher than the other two lines. And uh, if you correlate that with what channel they are, it's actually the two temporal parietal channels off of Muse, which are closer to the occipital lobe than the frontal channels, which means that the occipital lobe has higher alpha values uh, in the eyes closed than in the eyes open. So if I bring up both of these graphs and show them side by side, you can see the difference there. The one on the left is eyes closed and the alpha values are much higher in the temporal parietal channels than in the eyes open experiment. Now I'm not a MATLAB expert, so I had some difficulty in um, putting the graphs on top of each other and defining parameters, etc. cetera. Um, I found it actually much easier to just open up an Excel spreadsheet. And as you can see, I've got the labels there. And um, if you go to the Muse developers portal website, you can see that uh, they define the channels. So uh, channel one through four are uh, correlated with uh, the different temporal parietal and uh, frontal channels. And uh, so what I'm going to do is delete that column. And actually, I'm going to transpose. So I'm going control A, right click, and then uh, transpose the variables so that I can post it into that Excel spreadsheet. And make sure that you have everything selected uh, so that when you paste it in there, it gets all the information. So again, copy. Go to the Excel spreadsheet, paste it in there, making sure that the channels line up with the appropriate description. Uh, channel 1 is temporal parietal 9, uh, channel 2 is frontal polar 1, etc. I'm going to clear the objects, and then I'm going to open up for eyes closed, do the same thing. Again, getting our alpha relative values for eyes closed, getting rid of the reference numbers, control all, transpose. Making sure that I have everything selected. Copy and paste that into the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, now that all the variables in there, Excel is quite uh, smart in, turn, in terms of you can just go to chart, click chart, and it's going to graph it all out for you as long as you have everything selected. I kind of scrunched up the values there, but what you can see is that the two top lines, uh, that red line and the green line, are the readings for relative alpha activity in the temporal parietal channels 9 and 10 in the eyes closed experiment. And basically what that means is those are the burst of alpha waves that are occurring in your occipital lobe when you close your eyes. And I was able to record that in this uh, experiment. Um, also, you, if you were able to click around the graph, you could see that the, there's a couple of lines that are more towards the middle that are not the lowest but not the highest. And those are actually the uh, frontal polar lines from the eyes closed experiment. So the, even those picked up an increase in alpha wave activity, but since they weren't towards the back of your head where your occipital lobe is, it wasn't as pronounced as the temporal parietal uh, waves that got picked up. Now I've actually repeated this experiment several times, and this is another line graph where you can see that uh, this was a separate experiment that I pasted into Excel, and uh, the top two lines again are those temporal parietal channels in the eyes closed experiment. And all the other lines that are towards the bottom are either um, 
the frontal polar leads from the eyes closed experiment and or all the channels from the eyes open experiment. The eyes open experiment had all the channels for alpha relative values down towards the bottom of the graph because uh, it had that alpha wave burst suppression with eyes open. So that was a really nice little experiment to show what Hans Berger originally saw on EEG nearly 100 years ago. And now you can replicate it in your own home by using the Muse headset. I'll have more experiments like this coming soon. Thanks so much for the listen. This is Cody Rawl with Tech for Psych. Talk to you next time. <laughs>